Okay, in this video, I am going to talk you through isometric drawings. Isometric drawings are a form of drawing that we produce to show a 3D object, but it follows specific convention. And you can see on your screen that there is this grid. This grid is an isometric grid, and the lines go in three directions. You've got your vertical lines, and anything vertical will follow these vertical lines. And then you've got your two horizontal lines, which are off at 30 degrees off of the X axis. So both of these are 30 degrees up off of horizontal. So anything that would be either flat on the front or going down to depth, or maybe at a 45 degree angle, if you're looking at oblique, would follow one of these two lines. So we're going to look at the first basic principle, which is creating and how we create a 3D cube. And I'm going to go with a three by three measurement for this. So I'm going to start over here and I'm going to start at this point here. So here's where I'm going to start and I'm going to go down one, two, three. Now I've got a faint line there. I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker, easy for you to see. Now that's my first line and I'm going to turn this into what we call the crow's foot. So I've gone down I'm going to bring both of these out. I'm going to do a cube. So all the measurements are going to be the same for this one. Three along there. I'll make it a little bit easier to see. And then three here. I'm counting the shapes. Now, whether it's up and down, left to right, or right to left, it doesn't matter. Each of these shapes, each of these lines and segments are equal. Now I've got my crow's foot. I'm going to turn it into a reading book. So I'll go from there. I'm going to put the sides on the reading book. So three more along there and three down there and it matches up. And then here is my other side. I'm going a little bit off, we can tidy it up later. And there we go, I've got my reading book. And now we put a roof on it up here. So again, three by three, so three along here and three down here. And I've got my reading book. And if you drew this with a ruler nice and neat, you'd have a nice, neat isometric cube. But using these grids helps us get that shape nice and accurately. Everything is in the correct orientation. As so we've got our nice isometric grid there. We can take this further because we can use this as a crate or a scaffold for any other shapes we want to draw. If I wanted to round off this corner, I could round off this corner here and I could round it off here as well. Then I could redraw my line going across here on my two sides. I could then take a simple eraser and I'll make my eraser a bit smaller on here. And I could rub out anything that I don't need. And once I've done that, I can go back and I can start to tidy up my sketch. And everything is still in the correct proportions. I haven't had to guess where a line is going to go. I've got the crate that I started with. This is the creating technique. And as you can see, we can follow along and we can follow these grids. The first task I want you to do for this is on a piece of paper like this, I want you to draw out, first off, the basic cube, then play with the proportions. So this is three by three. We'll try a four by four, a three by five, and a two by six. And you can do these in whatever orientation you want just to play around with it. I'll show you an example of what a two by six might look like. So, and again, this is three by three by three. You can add your third dimension in here however you want. I want you to play around with it. So this could be a four by four by four, by four or a three by five by two, and a two by six by uh, four. Play around with it. So if I do two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Just count that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. And then I'm gonna come down my four. One, two, three, four. Here will be the four. Two, three, four. Here will be the four. Here's my two. I've got my six coming up here. My two coming down here and my six coming along here. Now I didn't use the crow's foot technique because I can already visualize what it's gonna look like. 
If I was to do that with the crow's foot technique, I'd start off down here with my two going down. I'd then have my six going back this way. So one, two, three, four, five, six. But this way would be my four. So one, two, three, four. I then put my sides on it. And then I put my roof on it and I just join these up. Now I'm going to overlap this shape here. That wasn't intentional, but okay, there we go. But this also shows another example of how you can use this technique to overlap shapes. Now, conveniently, these are nicely aligned vertically. So it's almost like one has been lifted straight up the other. But you could have it where they're not aligned vertically, but they're aligned horizontally. So this shape could be coming off of that. So I could end up with this shape like that. And then that comes down here. That's our shape. And then from there, it comes up and goes across. And I could then take my eraser. And I could rub out this bit in here. And it would look like that. These are some of the things you can do with this technique. And it is a really useful technique and a really useful skill. So your first task is to play around with some of these different size crates just to get used to drawing and counting the blocks. Okay, your next activity is to just replicate these shapes. And I've got a whole sheet of these shapes for you. But for now, I'm gonna talk you through how we do some of these simpler ones, and then you can follow along and you do the whole sheet at your own, in your own time. So let's start with this first one. Everything here follows the isometric grids. So it's nice and easy. And you could use the te creating technique if you want, or you can just try and follow and count and just familiarize yourself and get used to drawing on the grids. So I'm gonna start off up here, because it's always good to know where we're gonna start. Don't start at the bottom if you've got a limited space above you. And don't start at the top if you've got a limited space below you. I've got plenty of space below, so I'll start at the top. I'll start here. And here I've got one going down that way and three going down that way. I'll do my one first. And now I'm gonna do one, two, three. And now from here, well, I can, I can turn that into a rectangle. I can just finish off that top bit here. And I can then go down on sides. So one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. And it's the same here. So I'll draw that whole rectangle now. That lines up to three. But here, it goes down an extra one. So one, two, three, four, five. So you've got to count them properly. One, two, three, four, five. And this is where mistakes will occur. If you don't count properly, you will get find mistakes and then you'll run into errors. So take your time. Here, one, two. And it's the same over here. I can join that up. And then one here, one here, join that up, and that joins to there. Notice how I've done one section at a time. I didn't try and follow the outline counting because that's when you're more likely to make mistakes. Chunk your work down, break it down into small manageable tasks. Okay, so we've got this one over here. Let's try this one now. This one's a bit wider, so we've got to make sure we've got the room to the left and the right. I've got plenty of room to my left, so I'm okay there. I'll start off here. I've got one down there and one, two, three, four going down there. So here's my one going there and one, two, three, four. Okay. Now I can join it up here so I can break it down. I get that top piece done. And now I can go on my sides. So I've got one, two, three, four going down and one, two, three, four going across. I'll come down one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. And these will join up with four. I can count them just to make sure. One, two, three, four. And now I can join up this side. I can see it goes up by one here, and that means it should line up here, and that should be, oh, that went off. Let's uh, find a bit need to show it. 
we can see this should be four. One, two, three, four. There we go. But we've got to draw this bit in the middle. And this is the corner of this is one down and one in. That so should be here. The same here. One down and one in. Here. But I know it's two. And I can see the one, two, one, two. So I know it's two by two. Okay. And here we've got where it would come out the other side. So I can draw that bit in. Remember to draw in that edge. Nice and simple. This one is very, very similar, except we haven't got this bit at the bottom. So we can use all the same techniques. One and four. Oh. One there. One, two, three, four. And we can join that up. And then we've got one, two, three, four down on both sides. One, two, three, four down. One, two, three, four down. And we've got a four down here. And this joins up here. But here we've got a one and a one. And this comes up by three. This one comes up by three. They join up on the top. I add the one for depth, join it up here. And that's that one done. And then I'll quickly show you number four. I'll do it a little bit quicker. Starting up here, I've got a one by one square. So when you've got multiple layers, this is when it can get a bit more tricky. And this comes down with a one by one. So again, I'm just working surface by surface. I'm completing a shape as much as I can. And then I've got a three here. So I'll do that. Now I've got this bit here and I've got a one, two, three, four, five. A one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that was a bad line, wasn't it? Now I go across and I come up. Okay. Now here I can see I go across two. Now I need to try and draw this bit in. So I can pick where I'm going to go next. What I'll do is I'm going to draw this bit in up here. So I can see I go up one, then I've got from there that surface. So I can go up one here, then I can come down up there and there. And now I can do my five and my five here. So one, two, three, four, five. I can check that's correct because it lines up along this axis here. I'll do my five here. Join it up there. And now I can go across and finish this bit off here. And finish this bit off here. Now it's really important that we don't forget things like this section here. So this is how we just copy these shapes in isometric. A lot of this is about making sure we're following the lines, counting each measurement and drawing it accurately. Use a pencil and a ruler. That one is important. I'm using a electronic drawing pad on a computer, so it's a little bit more difficult to do that, but pencil and ruler. Okay. There's one more task. Let's have a look at task three. So I'm just gonna rub out this, we don't need that. Right, the last thing we're going to look at is thick and thin lines. Now, thin line, something like that. Thick line, you go over it a few more times or you use a thicker pen and it makes it more distinct. These are all drawn using thick lines to make them really bold and visible. I've drawn all of mine using quite thin lines. But we're going to go over with thick lines now and look at where we put thick lines. Now, we use thick lines to represent any edges we can't see the other side of. A thin line is just for detail. So distinct and obvious, but we can see both sides of the edge. A thick line, we can't. The example is here. We can see both sides of this edge. So this is gonna stay a thin line. But here on this outside boundary, it's gonna be a thick line. A shortcut for you is that the outside boundary will always be a thick line because you can't see past it. When I see past it, I mean see around the other side. 
So here, this edge, I can see this surface that the edge is attached to. I can't see the surface around the corner of it. So it becomes a thick line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the thickness of my drawing tool here. There we go. And I'm going to draw my thick line. So this becomes thick. Here becomes thick. Here. And here. On simple shapes like this. That was bad. On simple shapes like this, the thick and thin line is very, very easy. The outside boundary becomes thick. Like that. Oh, that was bad. Using a ruler would be much easier, wouldn't it? The outside boundary becomes thick, but the inside lines, this one, I can see both sides. This one, see both sides. This one, see both sides. This one, and this one, and this one. Well, they're all thin lines. Done. Over here, it gets a bit more complicated. We can follow that first principle where the outside boundary is always going to be thick. We'll make that nice and thick. And then we'll come down along here, come along here, here. And then we've got a little bit of a tricky situation here. So both sides is thin, both sides is thin, both sides is thin. Okay. But here, right. Both sides, you're thin. Both sides, you're thin. Oh, this one. Can't see what's around that edge. That one becomes thick. This one becomes thick. This one becomes thick. This one becomes thick. So you've got to pay attention here. And there will be occasions when half of a line will be thick and half won't. So over here, outside boundary, of course. So we'll start up here. We'll do the outside boundary. One down. Ooh. That was a very bad line. Now here's one of our examples. I'll stop there and I'll come back around this way. So we've got to this line here and half of the line is thick. All of the line is thick, sorry. There we go. All that line is thick because we can't see around it, but it connects up to a thin line here. You can see around both sides. So again, it's about paying attention and seeing what needs to be done. And then here, this one's a bit simpler, closer to the original first one. But we've got these bits here. Yeah, and like that. It can look or feel quite strange to have a thick line going over something like a thin line so around here, for example. But this is the correct technical way of drawing it and showing it. There we go. So this is thick and thin lines. If you're using a pencil, you can go by the rule. Oh, let's try that again. Rule of three. Thin equals one. Thick equals three. So you do one line for thin, but draw over it three times, or maybe over the same line three times, to make it thick. That's one way of doing it. Alternatively, or thin equals pencil, thick equals pen, but they must be black pens and standard pencils. No colors, please. Okay. These are your three activities. Good luck.